Prince, also known as the Purple One, his royal badness, the High Priest of Pop, the Prince of Funk, and of course, the artist formerly known as Prince. There's a reason why the world seemed to stop when we lost this huge music legend. He won Grammys, Golden Globes, MTV, VMA Awards, the Billboard Icon Award, the BET Lifetime Achievement Award, and even an Oscar. Makes sense considering the artist could play an impressive 27 instruments. A musical genius in its pure definition, but most people remember Prince for the way he changed music history by pushing the bar with his risque songs, videos, and wardrobe. And also for his massive hit film and album, Purple Rain, which permanently made the color purple synonymous with Prince. As if that wasn't enough to distinguish him, Prince was a fashion icon as well, with funky sexy outfits and his signature high heels, but a true creative artist. It's no wonder he influenced so many people and musicians. And with a professional career spanning 40 years, we definitely have a lot to tell you about the purple one. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Lauren Mayhew, and Mike Drop is celebrating this super legend by giving you 107 music facts about Prince. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the Purple Rain facts. Fact number one, Prince's real name is actually Prince. He was born as Prince Rogers Nelson on June 7, 1958 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Fact number two. His father named him after his jazz band, the Prince Rogers Trio, and his own stage name, Prince Rogers. His father's real name was John C. Nelson, and he was a pianist and a lyricist. Fact number three. His mother, Maddie Shaw, was a jazz singer and actually sang for his father's band, and then she became a social worker later on. Prince once said his mother is responsible for his wild side. Fact number four. Prince's parents were both African American and from the South. They separated during his childhood, which led him to move back and forth. Prince has an older sister, Tyka Nelson, who is also a singer, and five half-siblings when his father later remarried. Fact number five. As a young kid, Prince used to make up songs using rocks and bricks. His mom said he used to wander off in stores and she would always find him in the music department, playing with the instruments. Number six. Prince taught himself to play piano at age seven, guitar at age 13, and drums at age 14. One time he tried out a piano lesson, but he quit because the teacher wouldn't let him play what he wanted. So he decided to teach himself. The first song he learned on piano was the Batman theme song. Number seven. Prince took charge of his life at an early age. When he didn't get along with his new stepfather, he ran away from home, and a family named the Andersons adopted him. Number eight. Prince befriended their son, Andre Anderson, and at age 14, he, Andre, and their friend Charles Smith formed a band called Grand Central, which they later changed the name to Champagne. They had moderate success playing live, but soon broke up. Number nine. In 1974, Prince started recording demo tracks with Chris Moon, an aspiring songwriter with his own studio. Four years later, a local businessman, Owen Husney, heard these tracks and took them to Warner Brothers Records, getting Prince his first record deal. Number 10. Husband negotiated a pretty sweet deal for Prince. At 18, he became the youngest artist in Warner Brothers history to have complete artistic control in the studio, and he was also the youngest producer on the label. Number 11. In 1978, Prince debuted his very first album called For You. His first single was Soft and Wet, which reached number 12 on the R&B charts. Number 12. The following year, he released his second album entitled Prince. He got some recognition with the release of his single, I Wanna Be Your Lover, which reached number one on the R&B charts. This song, along with Why You Wanna Treat Me So Bad, created buzz and gave Prince the reputation of having sexually explicit material. Number 13. Inspired by his idol, Sly Stone, Prince made sure to form a diverse touring band that originally consisted of his childhood friend Andre Simone Anderson, Des Dickerson, Gail Chapman, Matt Fink, and Bobby Z. Rivkin. Prince eventually called this band The Revolution and later used them in recordings and live performances. Number 14. Dirty Mind was Prince's third album and again had a slew of explicit and sexual songs. He released the ones that were clean enough for radio play like Uptown, which reached number 5 on the R&B charts, and When You Were Mine, which is one of the most covered Prince songs, including a cover by 80s pop star Cyndi Lauper. Number 15. On the Dirty Mind tour, Prince was known to wear black bikini-style underwear under a trench coat. This started because Prince used to go commando in his spandex pants until one night a manager told him it was obscene and that he should wear underwear. So Prince listened. Number 16. His next album was Controversy in 1981. These first four albums were highly controversial because of their merge of religious and sexual themes. Despite the criticism, Prince, Dirty Mind, and Controversy all went platinum. Number 17. In 1981, Prince helped form Vanity Six, a female trio known for their hit song, Nasty Girl. They were mentored by Prince and even went on tour with him. He dated the lead Canadian singer, Denise Matthews, renamed Vanity, and appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone with her. She later left to sign with Motown Records. Number Number 18. In 1984, Prince created the hit feature film Purple Rain, along with the Purple Rain album. 
They both received high critical acclaim and are still considered a masterpiece today. The film is an autobiographical story set in the nightlife scene of Minneapolis. Number 19. The Purple Rain album sold more than 13 million copies and stayed at the top of the charts for 24 weeks. It brought us the iconic singles Purple Rain, When Doves Cry, and Let's Go Crazy. The album won two Grammy Awards and an Oscar for Best Original Song Score. Number 20. Prince's father, John Nelson, contributed to the Purple Rain album by co-writing the chord sequences for some of the tracks. Prince later used his father's chord sequences in his future songs. Number 21. By 1984, Prince had achieved something only the Beatles had done before. He had an album, a film, and a single all topping the charts at the same time. The single was When Doves Cry. Number 22. Prince's controversial music upset many people, especially the sexually explicit song Darling Nikki. A censorship group was formed by Tipper Gore, Al Gore's wife, called Parents Music Resource Center after she heard her daughter listening to the song. This group enacted the use of explicit lyric stickers on album covers. Number 23. Prince went on the Purple Rain tour in 1984 and had Latin percussionist Sheila E. as his opener. Sheila E. was mentored by Prince, who produced her album The Glamorous Life. She soon joined Prince's new backup band and the two were even engaged once, after Prince turned around and proposed to Sheila during a performance of Purple Rain. When they first met in 1978, after a concert she performed at, Prince told her that he was just fighting with his friend over who gets to be her husband. What a sweet young Prince. Number 24. Prince's next album was Around the World in a Day, which ruled the charts for three straight weeks, but after it received mediocre reviews, Prince allegedly had to be convinced to release singles from it. Luckily he did, because it brought us the singles Raspberry Beret and Pop Life. When the album dropped, Prince's management actually announced that he would retire from live performances, but thankfully, that lasted for only two years. Phew! Number 25. Prince then opened his new studio called Paisley Park and a record label with the same name. It was named after a song on his album. Number 26. In 1986, Prince released Parade, which was the soundtrack to his next film, Under the Cherry Moon. Though the film did not do well and even won Razzie Awards, the album was widely praised and sold 2 million copies. Number 27. In 1987, Prince fired The Revolution and only kept member Matt Fink in his new band. This was the new band that Sheila E. joined as its drummer. Number 28. Prince's ninth studio album, Sign O' The Times, received high critical acclaim and spun out hit singles Sign O' The Times, You Got The Look, and I Could Never Take The Place Of Your Man. Number 29. In 1989, Prince created the soundtrack for Tim Burton's Batman film and the famous single Bat Dance, which reached number one on the charts. Bat Dance was Prince's first number one hit since his song Kiss in 1986. Prince did not consider it a coincidence that Batman was also the first song he learned to play, saying in 1991, there are no accidents, and if there are, it's up to us to look at them as something else. Number 30. In 1990, Prince made a sequel to Purple Rain called Graffiti Bridge, also with a soundtrack for the film. Unfortunately, it didn't do well in the box office and was nominated for several Razzie Awards. To be fair, it's hard to top Purple Rain. Number 31. Prince named his new band The New Power Generation. Sheila E. had left by then, but the band had its very first rapping dancer, Anthony Tony M. Mosley. Prince and the New Power Generation released the album Diamonds and Pearls, which had the famous single Get Off. Number 32. Although Warner Brothers made Prince a vice president when he re-signed with the label in 1992, Prince began having issues with them, controlling more decisions than he would have liked, and a feud began between the two, leading to his name change so as to not breach his contract while continuing to make music. Number 33. On his 35th birthday in 1993, Prince changed his name to what he called the love symbol, which was a combination of male and female signs. The media began calling him the artist formerly known as Prince, or sometimes even just the artist. But his staff at Paisley Park was known to call him the dude. He used the name for seven years, until the year 2000, after his Warner Chapel publishing contract expired and he reclaimed the name Prince. Number 34. Years before Prince's record, The Black Album, actually came out, there was planned to give out a few secret copies to people before the official release date in 1987. But at the last minute, Prince changed his mind about releasing it, so the album ended up being highly bootlegged, one of the most bootlegged LPs in music history. Number 35. The battle between Prince and Warner Brothers escalated when they released the Black Album in 1994 against the artist's wishes. Prince then began making appearances with the word slave written on his cheek. Number 36. In 1994, Warner Brothers dropped its distribution deal with Paisley Park Records, which made the label go out of business. But Prince didn't let that set him back. Two weeks later, he released the single The Most Beautiful Girl in the World under the independent label Bellmark Records, which had also just released the hit Whoop There It Is by Tag Team. 
Number 37. Due to contractual obligations, Prince released four more albums under Warner Brothers Records, including the soundtrack to Spike Lee's movie, Girl 6. His last album for Warner Brothers was Chaos and Disorder in 1996, which he wrote in 10 days just to fit the minimum requirements of his contract. Neither parties promoted it much, so unfortunately it did not do too well. But Prince was finally out of his WB contract and free to do what he wanted. Number 38. Prince then created his own label, New Power Generation, or NPG, and released an album called Emancipation in 1996. The album went double platinum. Number 39. That same year, he married Mate Garcia, a dancer and singer in his band on Valentine's Day, and white doves were released after the ceremony. Mate later gave birth to their son, but sadly the baby died one week after birth due to a rare skull disorder called Pfeiffer Syndrome. The couple divorced on their third anniversary in 1999, and Mate went on to date Tommy Lee. Number 40. For his 1998 album, Crystal Ball, Prince created a four CD compilation that was packaged inside a clear plastic ball. And if you purchased it on his website, you received a fifth bonus disc called The Truth. It sold 250,000 copies. Number 41. When the year 1999 came around, Warner Brothers re-released the song and album 1999, capitalizing on its sales. 18 years after leaving, Prince would re-sign with Warner Brothers Records in 2014. Number 42. In 2001, Prince married his second wife, Canadian businesswoman Manuela Testolini, who worked for his charitable foundation. After five years, Manuela filed for divorce in 2006, and Prince was heartbroken. Number 43. In the late 90s, Prince became a Jehovah's Witness, which he was allegedly introduced to by bassist Larry Graham. Because of his new religion, Prince stopped using profanity in his music, and would either not perform his old explicit songs, or would change the lyrics. He was even known to sometimes knock on doors in Minneapolis to spread the word of Jehovah's Witnesses. His 2001 album, The Rainbow Children, had lyrics heavily influenced by his new religion. Number 44. After a few years out of the limelight, Prince made a comeback in 2004 by doing a spectacular Grammy performance with Beyonce Knowles. They performed his songs Purple Rain, Let's Go Crazy, and Baby I'm a Star, as well as Beyonce's Crazy in Love. A month later, Prince was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Number 45. In spring of 2004, Prince released the album Musicology, which won two Grammys that year. The tour for Musicology was also a huge success selling 1.4 million tickets and stopping in 69 cities. Each ticket included a copy of the album. Awesome party favor. Number 46. In 2006, Prince made the track Song of the Heart for the animated film Happy Feet. The song won him a Golden Globe for Best Original Song. Number 47. Later that year, Prince released the album 3121, which became his first number one album since Batman, and his first album ever to debut at number one. It knocked the high school musical soundtrack off its number one spot, which was eventually certified gold. Number 48. His next album, Planet Earth, debuted at number three, and to promote his upcoming London tour, Prince gave away free copies of Planet Earth. He then announced the 21 consecutive London shows he would do, and all 21 of them sold out. Number 49. Though the tour was for the album Planet Earth, the numbers were a reference to his previous album, 3121. He did 21 shows and sold the tickets for 31.21 pounds. He even came out with a brand of perfume that year called, you guessed it, 3121. Did we also mention that he opened a 3121 nightclub and a 3121 jazz restaurant at the Rio Hotel in Las Vegas? Guess he really loved that album. Or he really loved its meaning. Number 50. It's still a mystery what exactly 3121 refers to, but here are some theories over the years. 3121 is a reference to 1. His house. 2. His 31st album coming out on the 21st of March. 3. Some sexual meaning we don't want to get into. And 4. The more popular belief, it's a reference to the Bible verse 3121. Whatever it means, Prince began marking all sorts of things with the number. His costumes, his house walls, and even his business endeavors. Number 51. In 2009, Prince released the album Lotus Flower. The album was a three CD set that included the next two albums from Prince and a debut album from one of his protégés, Bria Valente. It was sold exclusively at Target in the US and online in Europe. Lotus Flower bloomed in at the number two on the Billboard 200. All right, peeps, lightning round. Did you know that Nick Jonas channeled Prince when he was making his first solo album? He's not the only one. Check out these other artists who named Prince as a huge influence. Fact 52. Lady Gaga has stated that Prince heavily influenced her music, especially the song Born This Way. We're guessing he may have also influenced her style and her carefree attitude as well. Fact 53. Little Red Corvette inspired Stevie Nicks to write her song Stand Back, which she co-wrote with Prince. Number 54. The Weeknd has said Prince was a vocal inspiration to him and even dedicated one of his lyrics to the purple one as a small tribute. He said that Prince was always just pushing the envelope. I want to be that for my generation. 
Fact 55. Justin Timberlake said that Prince had a huge impact on him and even did an Instagram tribute to the artist saying, Prince is somewhere within every song I have ever written. Fact 56. The singer Miguel, who has been compared to Prince in his career, said that, I grew up not only looking up to him as a musician, but as an icon, someone who's pushing the boundaries in his art. Fact 57. Andre 3000 was also inspired by Prince and said that he thinks Sign O, The Times, is the greatest album ever made. Fact 58. The singer D'Angelo said his brothers love Prince, and when they told him that he plays everything, writes everything, and sings everything, the five-year-old D'Angelo was hooked and learned how to play every single song on his second album, Prince. Number 59. Adam Levine's falsetto is inspired by Prince, and he loved the artist so much that he even invited him over one night just to jam out. And Prince accepted. Awesome. Air high five. Fact 60. Janelle Monae said, Prince is a mentor, a friend and a musical hero of mine, and he still is. She recently dedicated her whole set at Jazz Fest 2016 to Prince. Back 61, Alicia Keys loved Prince and even covered one of his songs in her debut album back in 2001. She later inducted him into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2004 with an amazing speech. More on the Prince fan list include Lenny Kravitz, Beyonce, Kelly Clarkson, Frank Ocean, Robin. I mean, honestly, the list is endless. So. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to stop here. That's the end of the lightning round. Which of these Prince-influenced artists is your favorite? Who do we leave out? Comment below and let us know. Number 62. Prince was known to be a perfectionist and very protective of his music, which is probably why he played almost all the instruments on his first five albums himself, and he always wrote and produced his own music. He did sometimes have co-writers, but he didn't use other musicians on tracks until later records. I mean, he didn't really need it, since Prince knew how to play 27 instruments. Number 63. Prince sometimes wrote songs for other artists like the Bangles hit Manic Monday, Cyanhead O'Connor's Nothing Compares to You, MC Hammer's Prey, and he co-wrote Madonna's track Love Song. Number 64. His nickname as a child was Skipper because though he was a giant star, Prince was not a giant person. Without heels, he was 5 foot 2 inches. Number 65. Despite being small, Prince was actually a really talented basketball player and was on the team at Central High School, one of the best teams in Minnesota. Even though he was really good, his small size got him less play, and so his stepbrother, Dwayne Nelson, was the star of the team. Number 66. Prince still loved basketball as an adult and played with friends at his home and studio all the time. After actor Charlie Murphy told a story of how Prince beat him badly at a game of pickup, Dave Chappelle famously reenacted the story on his TV comedy show, Chappelle Show. Prince was sometimes known to wear heels while playing, and then he would serve the losing team pancakes after. Number 67. Prince once serenaded Madonna at an intimate show of his at Paisley Park. The two dated briefly back in 1985 before Madonna met and married actor Sean Penn. Prince played electric guitar in Madonna's song and album Like a Prayer. I mean, the guy played 27 instruments. We'd book him too. Number 68. Another rare blonde he dated was actress Kim Basinger in 1989. They recorded the song The Scandalous Sex Suite together for the Batman soundtrack since Kim was the lead in the film. Number 69. Prince was known for wearing heels and platform shoes all the time, and many people think it was because he was short. But Prince actually said that he didn't wear them to be taller. He wore them because the women like him. And we know the women like Prince. Number 70. In the 1991 MTV Video Music Awards performance of Get Off with the New Power Generation, Prince stunned the audience when he turned around to reveal his assless chaps. Definitely a moment to remember and maybe replay. Number 71. After the 1985 Grammys, Prince raised more controversy when he declined to join the star-filled collaboration for We Are The World, a charity song written for African famine relief. Some say he left after seeing a sign that said, leave your ego at the door, while others say he just flat out didn't like the song. Either way, he made sure to still help out. Prince wrote his own song called For the Tears in Your Eyes and added it to the USA for Africa album. Number 72. The whole incident was spoofed on Saturday Night Live, with Billy Crystal playing Prince and singing a song called I Am Also the World. Turns out, Prince really liked Billy Crystal's impression of him on SNL. Number 73. Two years after Purple Rain, Prince made another movie called Under the Cherry Moon, which is a romance story about a gigolo who falls in love with the woman he is trying to swindle. Prince starred as the gigolo, and it was also his first time directing a film. But unfortunately, the movie bombed, and even won some Razzie Awards. Luckily, people did like the soundtrack for it, Parade, and it reached number three on the charts with the single Kiss reaching number one. Number 74. Prince also played the 2007 Super Bowl halftime show and still managed to do an amazing performance despite the heavy downpour of rain, which was the first time in NFL history it had rained during the Super Bowl. The medley's ending song? Purple rain, of course. Number 75. In 2014, on the reboot of the Arsenio Hall show, Prince said he was great at cooking omelets and jokingly said, all my friends have high cholesterol. 
Number 76. In high school, Prince was known to be an introvert, and he even had his picture removed from the yearbook as a junior and senior. Number 77. During his 1987 UK tour, Prince wanted to get a baby grand piano to his hotel so he could practice more, but it was impossible to get the hotel upstairs. Prince was so determined he hired a crane to bring it in through the window. Uh, workaholic much? Number 78. Prince was pelted with garbage when performing as an opening act for the Rolling Stones in 1981. He was wearing his signature underwear and trench coat outfit. In past shows, he was also pelted with food, Coke cans, alcohol bottles, and even a bag of chicken bits. Number 79. In his earlier days, Prince used to do very few interviews and would be very selective, sometimes not even letting journalists use a tape recorder. He said he wanted them to concentrate on the music and not focus on him coming from a broken home. Number 80. Prince's very first TV interview was on Oprah in 1996. In the episode, Prince goes to Oprah's West Loop studio, and Oprah then goes to Prince's studio, Paisley Park. Number 81. Prince was once sued by his half-sister, Lorna Nelson, who accused him of stealing her lyrics for the 1987 song, You Got the Look. Luckily, the judge ruled in Prince's favor. Number 82. Prince was not a big fan of collaborations. He even turned down an offer to duet with Michael Jackson in the 80s. But he eventually caved years later and collaborated with In Vogue and Stevie Wonder in 2005 for Stevie's song, So What's the Fuss? Probably because he was a fan of Stevie Wonder's music. Number 83. Prince created yet another backing band, this time all female, called Third Eye Girl. It consisted of American drummer Hannah Welton, Canadian guitarist Donna Grantis, and Danish bassist Ida Christine Nelson. They released their first album with Prince called Plectrum Electrum in 2014 and performed with him in Arsenio Hall, Fallon, and Saturday Night Live in 2014. Donna and Ida were also members of his new Power Generation band. Number 84. For their SNL performance, Prince requested to do one more long performance instead of the traditional two short ones that producer Lauren Michaels has all the artists do. Though he usually doesn't change SNL traditions, Lauren okayed Prince's request and he and Third Eye Girl did one rockin' eight minute performance. Number 85. Prince was on the show Muppets Tonight in 1997. It featured him and the Muppets telling some country jokes, singing the song Starfish and Coffee, and Raspberry Sorbet in the cafeteria, and a bear struggling to find his name on the guest list because he went by the symbol at the time. Definitely Muppet moments to remember. Number 86. Conan O'Brien had written a Prince Comes to Springfield episode of The Simpsons, but it was never produced. Someone from Prince's staff allegedly sent him his own version of the script, which Prince liked. But when The Simpsons writer recent and the real one, Prince did not like it. Number 87. Prince was a huge fan of the show New Girl and made an appearance in 2014 after he reached out to Zoe Deschanel and Hannah Simone offering to do an episode. He even came up with the idea of using a lighter instead of a flashlight when he pulls Jesse into the closet because he thought it would be funnier. The producer said he had comedic talent and he was geniusly funny. Number 88. Prince has been on countless talk shows, including that of Leno, Letterman, Fallon, George Lopez, Tavis Smiley, Rosie O'Donnell, Ellen, Oprah, and the original and revamped Arsenio Hall. He did three nights in a row on Leno and a whole Prince episode on both Lopez, Tonight, and the Arsenio Hall show. We weren't kidding when we said workaholic. He also performed on American Idol. Number 89. In 1997, Prince's songs Little Red Corvette and When Doves Cry were put in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. Number 90. In November of 2007, Prince put out a diss track toward a fan group called PFU, Prince Fans United, after they would not take down certain pictures of Prince on their fan sites. Their response? They loved the song and were even honored to have inspired it. Eventually, they played nice and took down the specific photos that were not approved. Number 91. Prince was chosen as the world's sexiest vegetarian in PETA's online poll in 2006. Not surprising considering he made number 5 on VH1's list of 100 sexiest artists back in 2002. Number 92. Prince has always been charitable. In 2005, he wrote the song SST and Brand New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. And in 2001, he donated a whopping $1 million to the Harlem Children's Zone, a nonprofit organization for children in poverty. He also donated $250,000 each to the Uptown Dance Academy and the American Ballet Theater. Looks like Prince really loves kids and art. Number 93. Prince's father was not actually abusive, as depicted in the film Purple Rain. Prince said his dad never swore or drank, and that he actually always thought his dad was cool. Number 94. On the first warm day of the year, Prince once surprised his tour group with a game of softball instead of rehearsal. Number 95. Inspiration comes when you least expect it. Prince came up with the idea for his hit song, Little Red Corvette, after he fell asleep in bandmate Lisa Coleman's pink car. They had pulled an all-nighter recording session. Guess he had a little more left in him. Number 96. Prince loved Mozart, and he once said he felt like he could have been Mozart in a past life. He was, of course, a big fan of the movie Amadeus. Number 97. 
Earlier in his career, Prince's favorite meal was spaghetti and orange juice. There's some speculation that Prince actually has some Italian in his ancestry, which is maybe why he loves spaghetti. Or, of course, because it's delicious. Number 98. When Prince didn't have money in his youth, he would sometimes stand outside McDonald's just to smell the food. Number 99. Took him a while to get permission, but Weird Al spoofed Prince's music video for When Doves Cry in his 1989 comedy film called UHF. Number 100. Apparently, even after they were married, his wife mate was not allowed to call Prince. He could only call her, and she never knew why. Uh, cause Prince is mysterious. Duh. Number 101. Prince not only dated Carmen Electra, but also started her career. He mentored her and produced her debut album in 1993, and he also suggested she use the stage name Carmen Electra. Her real name is Tara Lee Patrick. Number 102. Prince loved to smash guitars after performing, and he once smashed the guitar of Captain Kirk Douglas of The Roots while performing on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, and Douglas was not happy to lose it. Number 103. Prince started working on his style back in high school. One former classmate said he often left his large collared shirts open, wore platform shoes and chokers, and either had a big afro or cornrows. Number 104. In Washington, D.C., Prince once paid a hair salon to shut down, close all the windows, and do his hair. Must be some haircut. Number 105. According to Eric Leeds, his saxophone player, and Susan Rogers, his sound engineer on Purple Rain, Prince was actually very conservative and even thought to be a Republican. Shocking considering his sexual music, but not so shocking considering his new religion. Number 106. In an interview with Tavis Smiley, Prince said that he was born epileptic and had seizures when he was young. Number 107. Kevin Smith once told a story of how Prince requested a camel from his staff during a late night in January and was confused as to why he could not get one. Smith learned this story after he told Prince's manager to tell the artist that he could not shoot the documentary Prince wanted. Once again, I'm Lauren Mayhew and you just finished watching Mike Drop's 107 Music Facts about Prince. With such an amazing legacy and a vault of over 500 unreleased songs, it's clear that Prince will definitely live on forever. Did you guys enjoy these facts? Make sure to subscribe because we are bringing you guys more facts about your favorite musicians every week. Let us know which artists we should feature next and keep on partying like it's 1999.